the people who call themselves the followers of Jesus Christ are currently the most divided faith group on earth. I mean, think about it. Can you name another, another religion that, that even has more than two or three factions? Meanwhile, we've split ourselves into denominations that don't get along, and those denominations have churches that don't even get along, and those churches themselves keep on splitting and dividing, and now we've got individuals creating their own websites and their own followings, claiming that they're the only ones who get it. And, and what's crazy and terrible about this is that Jesus Christ himself prayed that we would become perfectly one. Just like the Father and Son are perfectly one, he says, that's the way I want my followers to be, so that the world will believe that I was sent from the Father. He says our believability is going to be based upon our unity. Meanwhile, the world looks on, and all they see is chaos. All they see are these arguments and these factions. And, and it seems like we don't care. I mean, how do we not care that God himself, the creator, holy God in heaven, says, I want you to be one. My son died. He shed his blood so you could be perfectly one. And I can put all things under him. He died so I could be one with God and one with all of those who say they trust in the blood of Jesus for their salvation. You guys, this is not just a good idea. It's not just, oh, let's all get along. This is sacred. And as we fight for truth and we fight for holiness, we also fight for the unity of the faith. It says in Ephesians 4, he goes, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope, that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. God wants oneness and he wants us to be eager to maintain that oneness. Do you understand that if we say that we are a part of the body of Christ, do you understand how sacred it is? that God himself, that Jesus would say, you are a member of my body. That is such a sacred honor to think that I am a part of the body of Christ. And there are some of you who, who have the spirit in you. I mean, God dwelling in you. So how would I dare treat you with disrespect? How would I dare divide myself from you? But instead, if God dwells in you, I treat you like I, like I would have treated the Virgin Mary, who, who had the Savior, the Lord, in her womb. Can you imagine the honor you would give to her? Then do we believe Jesus' words? that God himself dwells in us now. And if that is true, shouldn't we be so blown away by this honor? And shouldn't we show so much reverence toward anyone else who has God dwelling in them? This is our duty. This is our job. This is what we devote ourselves to. In fact, he tells the leaders in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, that he says that their job is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith.